Here's my full story of how I healed from neuroplastic pain or mind-body concerns. I've gotten lots of requests over the last couple of weeks to do a video on my full story of how I healed from neuroplastic pain or mind-body concerns. And so in this video, you know, it's gonna be a little bit longer, but I'm gonna explain, you know, how my chronic pain developed, what I went through over a number of years, and how I eventually completely healed from my chronic pain symptoms using a mind-body approach. And so a good place to start is really in childhood. Because for a lot of people, their journey towards developing chronic pain begins when you're a child. And so when I was a child, to give you context, I was sensitive. I still am very sensitive. And what I mean by that is I had really big emotions. So I was always feeling really deeply. And looking back, I think there was definitely an element of anxiousness. I wasn't aware of it, but there was some anxiety that was occurring even probably around the time I was seven or eight years old. And as I became a, you know, adolescent, bullying started to happen in school. And so I remember, especially in junior high, I hated going to school. I just didn't feel safe there. I was always being bullied, especially verbally by other kids. And as a result, you know, my nervous system was just constantly in a fight or flight state or in complete shutdown. And, you know, my parents weren't fully aware of this. I think I definitely kept a lot of this to myself and really suffered alone with it. This really has a big thing to do with why my chronic pain developed, because from then on, I just was always trying to be perfect or people please so that I could fit in. And when I became a teenager, part of my story is I became heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol. So I think from the age of about 14 to 17, my alcohol and drug use just took off. It became really rampant. My parents became very aware of it. And I have very loving parents. I've been very privileged with that. They're very caring and they were really worried about me and my behavior was becoming erratic and at this point you know my mental health was also falling apart i was feeling depressed i was feeling highly anxious and i was dealing with my emotions with my mental health issues by using drugs and alcohol and it became so excessive and my life became so chaotic that my parents actually admitted me into a long-term drug treatment center for adolescents I was 17 at the time. Now this wasn't, you know, because I decided to do it, it was forced. And so, you know, for about eight months, I was in drug treatment and I learned a lot. I recovered and I became very committed to sobriety because I knew that in my understanding, like I will always be a recovering alcoholic and have issues with drugs. So I never since then I've been sober, uh, which is a big achievement of mine. And I'm very proud of that. But it's so clear looking back that I was just doing this to deal with my emotions. Like I didn't want to feel my emotions. And so when I graduated from drug treatment, I was 18 years old, ended up upgrading my schooling, uh, my high school, because I was pretty far behind at that point and then went into university. Even though I learned a lot when I was in the treatment center, I really connected with my emotions. I still had a lot of avoidance and didn't wanna feel things. And so as life became more serious, school started to pick up. I was moving towards becoming a therapist. I think especially because of the treatment center, I was pretty motivated to help people. That was a big goal of mine. But my perfectionism just took off, I was being so perfectionistic at school, putting so much pressure on myself, being so self-critical. And then my relationship with my partner now, and she's wonderful. If you haven't seen our podcast or heard our podcast, uh, her name's Anne, and we both do a podcast together, which I'll put the links down below that you can check out. 
But our relationship at that point when I was in early university was becoming more and more serious. And that really scared me. Looking back, I was terrified. I was terrified of living life, of moving forward in life, of having responsibilities. I think sometimes as adults, we pretend like the world isn't big and scary, but it is. It can be really scary being an adult or even being a teenager in the world. And I was feeling that, but then I started to get chronic pain symptoms. And so where it started is I was training for my first triathlon ever uh, with a buddy of mine. And I was probably running like 50, 60 kilometers a week. And I've always been super active. And I started to get pain in my right knee. And I did the normal thing everyone would do. I iced it, I rested it. I went to physio and chiropractors trying to resolve it. And it just wasn't getting better. And basically over about three and a half, four years, my chronic pain just took off like wildfire. It was all of a sudden then both knees and then it was both shoulders. And then eventually my worst symptom was like my back and my hips. It was definitely the most debilitating started to occur as well. And I think with a lot of people that have had chronic pain, I did every test imaginable, MRIs, x-rays, ultrasounds, trying to figure out what was going on. And I did lots of physical treatments and really nothing was resolving it. And at the time they really couldn't find much. Like I had some chronic inflammation in my hamstrings, but it didn't explain the widespread pain that was everywhere. Really, you know, a few doctors told me like you have hyperactive nerves and you're just gonna be in chronic pain the rest of your life. And I think I was probably 24 or 25 at this point. And I was like, oh my goodness, like I can't believe that this is happening to me and I'm just gonna be dealing with this the rest of my life. And so like a lot of people when they're in chronic pain, I became very anxious, very depressed, and my world just shrunk. And so over these four years, I just started doing less and less with my body. I was so terrified of the pain, so in despair of it, and I didn't want to worsen it because at this point, I viewed that there was something really wrong with my body. And if I kept living life the way I was living, it was just gonna get worse and worse. So my solution out of fear was to just avoid. And it started small, like I slowly cut out my workouts, Eventually, though, I was terrified to walk. I know at one of my jobs, I even had like a special parking pass because even walking more than a block, like my knees and my hips and my back would just be so painful. Even with my arms, there was so little I could do. So I kept doing university and did graduate at this period from my undergrad, but it was so painful. Like writing papers was so painful for my arms and my hands. You know, this is really a dark period of my life, without a doubt. And I think by the end of it, I ended up going off of work for about three or four months because it just wasn't getting better and I couldn't tolerate it anymore. And then, you know, one night when I was up super late because I couldn't sleep uh, because my back would hurt sometimes when I would sleep or my hips would hurt. And I was just looking on the internet i'm sure lots of people watching this channel have done these searches of how to heal my chronic pain or can i heal my chronic pain i can't remember what i typed into google and this youtube video came up of this guy and i wish i remembered his name i looked for the videos before shooting this and i couldn't find them any i can't find them anymore Um, but i'm super grateful uh, for these youtube videos this guy put up and he talked about how he recovered from his chronic pain using Dr. Sarno's approach. And he talked about TMS. And at first when I was watching this, I think he had like seven, a seven part series uh, on his healing. And at first when I learned about this, I was like, this is ridiculous. This, this is not true. This is not what's going on. And to give you context, I was training to be a therapist and I still was having a hard time buying in that my pain was more neuroplastic in nature and more a brain and nervous system issue. I mulled it over. I remember talking about it with my partner kind of angrily. And eventually I just came back to it because I was desperate. And so I bought Dr. Sarno's book. I also bought Dr. Schubiner's book, uh, Unlearn Your Pain, which is a great book uh, if you haven't checked it out. I was reading them and I started to buy in. 
because some of these things added up. And at first, you know, it's the logic. That's what really helped me. Like it logically made sense. They couldn't really find anything majorly wrong with my body. And my pain wasn't behaving the way structural pain did. It was widespread, it moved all around. Uh, it was inconsistent and my emotional state would affect it. And so around this time, I had this huge exception happen where basically I was working at a university wellness center and in between sessions with clients, I would lie down on the ground because my back would hurt so much from sitting. And at this point I was doing some kind of like hope meditation. And I was just meditating on what I would want my future to look like. And I imagined myself not being in pain. And I vi really visualized, you know, holding my child and my partner being there. And we, we were just this big, happy family. And then all of a sudden my pain went from like probably an eight or a nine out of 10, just shot right down. It like, and I stood up and I wasn't in pain. And again, this was a huge exception early on for me because it made me realize like, whoa, like structural pain or systemic pain is not going to function in this way. It's not going to be so reactive to my emotional state. And that really opened the door. It was that and a few other experiences that really started me believing that this was a mind body issue. And then I started to do the work. And so get, to give you context, this was probably, I think it was like a month before my wedding. So I was uh, preparing to get married, which there was a lot of stress around because I didn't know how I was going to be able to stand all day and do photos. And it, it was just very overwhelming. I was very worried because I barely was moving at this point. And so, you know, I'll give you a rundown of like what I did that was really helpful early on. So I really connected with my emotional state. I did do some journaling. I know journaling really connects with some people and Nicole Sachs has uh, a pretty good method around this, but it was more so that I was like starting to attend to the emotions behind the pain. And I remember I was on my bachelor party and I was stressed out on my bachelor party because I couldn't really move. And I was worried all the other guys were going to be kind of annoyed by it. And so I felt this pressure and we went to the hot springs. I remember my back was really painful. And then we went back to the condo. I remember I just went and laid down because my back was really aching and I just allowed myself to feel the pressure, to feel kind of the anger that I was feeling underneath. And then all of a sudden the pain shot down again. And so I started to do this emotional work consistently and maybe a little too much. Like I was pretty uh, committed at this point. And so I was probably spending an hour or more a day doing some of this healing work, whether it was journaling, whether it was feeling my emotions in my body, which I have lots of videos on. And I started to do something very similar to somatic tracking. At the time, I didn't know what somatic tracking was, but I kind of was doing something very similar where I was observing the pain in this light, easy way and giving messages of safety. And then it, my recovery started to really progress because I actually started to approach things in life. I started to approach doing things with my body again. And it was slow at first. I know walking was a big one for me where I slowly started going on like five minute walks and it was painful. And I knew it was gonna be painful no matter what I did, but I really worked on doing somatic tracking with movements, which was super helpful for me because I actually started to approach things I was avoiding. And then my, my life started to widen which is a huge thing when you're in chronic pain, as I said, your life is so small, but my life started to widen more and more. I was able to do more things like even just going out for dinner with friends. And I really focused at this time as I was starting to approach life again in reducing the preoccupation or obsessiveness I had about the pain. Cause at the worst of it, I was thinking about it 80, 90% of my day. And so I really started to focus on other things in my life whether it was my relationship, whether it was just doing fun things. I know I've said on this channel before, I was watching Modern Family for the first time and I'm obsessed with the show. I've seen it like four times through. And it just was this fun, goofy show. And I was really starting to pull out of my depression and anxiety as my life started to widen. Then I started to work again at, or I was already working right when around the time I had started but I had changed jobs and I was really enjoying my job. I found a job that was a good fit. Uh, it wasn't too stressful. And I kind of suggest that like, if you want to heal, you don't want to 
put too much stressors in your life at the time. I know that's not always possible, but it worked really well for me. And I was really enjoying working again. Over time, I started to work out again. And this is a huge thing that started to trigger that I was healing. So at this point, probably three or four months in, my pain was no longer chronic. There might be some pain flares here and there, but it wasn't chronic anymore. And so I started to exercise again. And I think probably, you know, from the time that I found out about Dr. Sarno and started doing the work, it probably took me about eight months to me fully working out again. So I, could I have done it quicker? Yeah. But I wanted to create feelings of safety as I did that. And so that really, you know, I hope it emulates, you know, that healing is possible from mind body concerns, that you are able to heal if the pain is neuroplastic. With my story and what worked for me, I want to be clear with people that different things may work for you. It may not be exactly the way it looked like for me. I have lots of content on this channel. And I'm really committed to this channel because I found out about a mind body approach from YouTube. So I really wanted to contribute to this community and give free content. You know, I have lots of content that you can explore and that you can find things that kind of work for you. So I hope this video was helpful. Please put your questions or comments down below, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.